Hello friends, Coach Bob here today. And today we're gonna to talk about the wonders of road rash. What is road rash? Here right now is something you don't want any part of. Years ago, my daughter was on a bicycle ride in the neighborhood here. She wasn't really going very fast. I'm guessing 10, 15 miles an hour. A car pulls out, she panicked. She hit the front brake hard, went over the handlebars. Really bad abrasion on her right shoulder and on her right knee. Bad enough, she had to have plastic surgery two times. It was really ugly. It was really painful. It was hard, not only for her, but as a family, it was very difficult getting through that healing process with her, dealing with infection, scarring, stitches, problem after problem after problem. And I realized that day that when I was out riding on a motorcycle at 40, 50 plus miles an hour, that bad things could actually happen. So an abrasion, what is it actually? Sandpapering of your flesh happens as you slide across the pavement. It doesn't sound like a lot of fun. We, we laugh about it, we call it road rash, and we, man, that's gonna hurt, that's gonna leave a mark. It turns into less of a joke at higher speeds. Do you know that for every mile an hour that you go over 30 miles per hour, that when you go down, that takes one millimeter of flesh away? That means that when you're going 44 miles per hour, that's 1.4 centimeters of flesh. That's a little over an inch. That's a lot of meat to leave on the road. And at 70 miles an hour, it can chew an inch and a half of skin and the muscle below that flesh. Last year, during a prolonged illness of my father, I was talking to one of the nurses that was there. He was a great guy. And we were talking about motorcycles. I told him that I rode a Triumph Speed Triple and he was impressed, of course. He told me of a story where he was working in the ER one night and a guy had gone down and he had slid on his knees down the highway and it ground his kneecaps off. It affected this ER nurse so greatly that he ended up selling his motorcycle. Well, I don't want to do that. I just want to be safe. So I thought this time when I start riding, I'm going to wear some riding jeans and see if they can't afford me a little more protection. And we're going to talk about that right after this. So, the street and steel Oakland riding jean. You know, when I first went out looking for jeans, all I can tell you is I didn't want to look like Justin Bieber. I don't want to look like the old muffin top man wearing the skinny jeans. And I will tell you that a lot of the jeans do look that way. And somewhat, I would not say they look that way, but they certainly feel that way. They are stretchy material, which actually works pretty well when you're riding. Um, the, my only real complaint with them is that the knee pad is prone to riding up high. I have a 34 inch inseam. And I think most of these pants are not designed for guys with really long legs. I'm six foot two inches tall. So I wear a 34, 34, sometimes a 36, 34, especially if it's around Thanksgiving, it'd be a 36, 34. And these jeans, because they do stretch, they work on any occasion. But the knee pad does like to ride up a little bit. So what I had to do is adjust them to the absolute lowest position possible so that I could wear them and that it would actually cover my kneecap. Because without it covering my kneecap, they're just not serving any purpose for me at all as far as that's concerned. It was very important after hearing my friend's story about ground off kneecaps. That just didn't sound real appealing to me. The first time I tried them on, I realized they fit pretty well. And they are kind of slimming, which is nice. They feel good when you ride, and they don't seem to have any hot spots that develop that create real issues. I will tell you that the jeans themselves are hot though. If you ride in the summertime, and certainly if you're riding like I do in the state of Florida, it's really hot anyway. Your kneecaps sweat, um, the pants are thick, and they do cut the wind and so you're not getting that airflow that you would get through a normal pair of jeans. 
That's just the nature of it. If you have the protection, you're just not going to have as much airflow. The other thing is that the pants come in a pre-cut length. The length of them is 33 and a half inch inseam. And as I said, I wear a 34 inch inseam. I don't really look like I'm walking in the water as we used to say in the old days, but they're really not as long as I would like for them to be. They look fine when I walk around and certainly when I'm wearing my Alpine star boots, they, they come down to the top of the boot, uh, to the top of my foot. Um, so it doesn't look silly. But when I ride, uh, sometimes you see, may see my ankle um, just when my legs are bent. Whether it's really noticeable to the other person, I don't know. They're woven out of a stretch denim. It's a 12 ounce stretch denim. Uh, they have a, a seamless knee design. There are five pockets. Looks like a traditional Levi jean as far as the pockets are concerned. And it's heat and tear resistant Aramid reinforced in the seat, hips, and knees. Aramid is in the Kevlar family, and so you can rest assured that it's going to be abrasion resistant. I don't know exactly how far you could slide down the pavement before you would start getting to the meat on your rear end, but I really wouldn't want to find out either. The only downside to these pants that I see, and I knew that when I was purchasing them, is they don't have any sort of armor in the hips or the the butt area, those types of things. Now with the type of riding that I'm doing, I think for the most part, that's fine. I don't plan on going down, but I don't think anyone ever does. I will say that they provide me a lot more protection than the other pants that I wear. This Kevlar reinforcing wraps around from the waistline all the way down to your knee pads in the front and down through your mid thigh in the back covering all of your rear end area all the way up to your waist. It looks pretty heavy duty and again the airflow issue they're just hotter pants. That's just all there is to it. Do I like them? Yes. Do I recommend them? Highly. And I will tell you if you're going to go out and ride man be safe out there. Don't leave yourself scattered all over the highway. So go out and get you a nice pair of riding jeans. Don't worry about it. You're going to have to spend a hundred bucks or so. I've seen these pants for as little as $89 during the Christmas season and as much as $129. I think if you wait for the right time, you can find a good deal and I think you should get a pair. I will tell you, if you don't get this particular brand, that's okay. But make sure you get something that's designed for riding. Be safe. Again, don't leave you scattered all over the pavement. I might slide down and get you all over me. I don't like that. Anyway, if you're not having fun out there, you're doing it wrong. If you like this content and appreciate this kind of dry humor, as I've been told I have, then please click like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And you stay safe and have a great day. We'll talk to you next time.